Hello, this video is for the Ceramics One students at Mason High School. We are working on a pinch cup exercise. This exercise will be teaching the students uh, two things. It'll be teaching them about pinching and the pinch process and the cleaning and the refining of a pinch form, but also it will be an opportunity for them to try two different low fire glaze techniques. We are going to be using um, Scraffito, uh, which actually could also be high fire as well, but we'll be using uh, under glazes, or in the case of this white, this is a white slip, um, on the leather hard pot before it's been fired, and then we will carve through. So this one is actually carved and textured, like if you feel it, it's textured. And we will also be using the glaze technique of Majolica, M-A-J-O-L-I-C-A. Um, Mialica is the way that I was first taught to pronounce it, so I'm assuming that is acceptable. Um, the Both techniques are kind of cool because for low fire clays, they give you an opportunity to have very sharp, sharp um, results. Like in the case of Mialica, it was an Italian technique that was developed uh, with using a white base glaze and colored glazes over the top or stains. Um, in the case of this, you don't lose your detail. It stay, remains very very um, uh, sharp and detailed. I will have uh, successive videos on how we do both the Scraffito and how we do the Mialica. This video is going to be more or less about the way that we pinch them and these are just some other examples. So I have a previous video in which I did this cup but this is a new video with some uh, different information that I wanted to give my students. So when we begin a pinch form, you usually begin with a ball. Now, if you have scrap clay that you have combined and put together, you can wedge your scrap. Wedging looks somewhat like kneading bread dough. So it's a pushing and turning. I do a rotational wedge where it uh, is a spiral wedge and it mixes the clay within itself. So you usually want to have um, a clay that is either wedged if it's scrap or you could use new clay with my students we could just use new block clay now once it's wedged or if it's a block if it's a uh, square you want to make it into a round ball okay now I usually kind of you know act like I have a baseball or something in my hands oh the weight of this particular one this happens to be like a pound and an eighth um, a nice comparison is think about the size of your fist and that's a good size for a pinch pot you have to be able to reach uh, from the thumb on the inside and your fingers on the outside, you have to be able to reach around. So if, you, if it's a really big piece, you won't be able to pinch it and reach around. So this is a good size. Now, um, for the Ceramics One kids, since this is the first time we're doing a pinch pot, uh, we, we are just keeping it small. Um, the size really doesn't matter, but we're not adding on height. So I'm going to start by putting my thumb into the middle of the ball, okay? And with my thumb on the inside, I'm going to reach around and I'm going to pinch the base of the ball. So this is going to be the base of my pot. And then I rotate it and I pinch going up the sides. Okay. And as you are pinching, the goal should be to try to keep the wall about as thick as a pinky, so maybe three eighths of an inch. So I pinch the bottom first, then the base of the walls, and then I work my way up. And you have to develop a sensitivity to make sure that you're not going too thin. We are going to be doing a cleaning technique, which will uh, help to um, really refine and clean it. But if you have it too thin, you could end up by going through. So when you get to the edge, you have to be aware of keeping the edge the same thickness, again, about like a pinky. Now look for cracking. If you ever have surface cracking, like I have a couple of cracks, some minor surface cracking here, going to blend over that. The surface cracking gets deeper and bigger if you ignore it. So make sure that you uh, take care of that right away. Now, before I go on, I do want to remind my students that I have these little tutorial posters. This upper part shows what we're doing today. 
This shows a cross section of the ball. When you stick your thumb in, you pinch the base first, and then you go up the walls. Now, it is rounded. I keep it rounded because I keep it in my hand what, the whole time I'm doing it. If it starts to get a little wide, you can do, as I show with the arrows there, you can just gently squeeze it in to make it a bit more narrow. Now, as you do that, as you make something more narrow, you have to watch for creasing. Sometimes you get a little bit of creasing that occurs in there. So blend over any creasing, whether it's inside or outside, side to side immediately as soon as you see them. Usually if you just do it a little bit at a time when the clay is very soft, you don't get that much. Um, if you, the longer you work with clay, the drier it's gonna get and uh, the more likelihood of cracks starting. So you saw how quickly I worked with this. It was pretty fast. You should be pinching it within five to 10 minutes. If you're taking 20 minutes to pinch a ball, that's really too long and it's gonna start to crack on your edges. Okay, now it's round because I've been holding it in my hand this whole time. This is the first time I'm going to set it down and tap it because I want to flatten out the base a little bit. Okay, so this is the general form of my cup. If Again, if I wanted to modify it and squeeze it in a little bit, I certainly could. All right, there is the form of my cup. I'm going to just gently blend over maybe some of the, uh, the little lumps that I had in the bottom. Now, if this is as far as you get on the first day, that is fine. But if you have time, you could go ahead and do a little bit of smoothing. And for this, I'm going to be using a yellow rib. Now ribs are uh, something that they originally were made from bone. They were made from ribs originally, but these are made, I think they might be made of silicone. These are Cheryl mud tool ribs. I will link the uh, tools that I'm using in the video description so you all can see that. Um, what I'm going to do is smooth the exterior. Now, I'm going to put this up on a turntable. If you would like to use a turntable, you can. It is optional. So a turntable is nice just because it does allow you to keep moving around. Now, when I rib, I stand up because I find it much easier to have free motion of my arm and everything when I'm ribbing and standing. So notice that my hand is on the interior of the pot and I'm pulling up with the rib and pressing against my hand on the inside. If you don't put your hand on the opposite side of the wall when you rib, you're gonna smush and re kind of shape your pot, which you don't want to do. All right, so you can see how quickly that was. The purpose of ribbing is it gets out some of the initial denting that happens. I can also flip it upside down. And while standing, I can look at the base and my whole goal is to have this a circular base, which is in the middle. So as I rib out here, if I see that the, the base is off center, I can push it a little bit more in the direction that it might need to go. So I don't know if I said, but I do put a paper towel on the uh, turntable just to help keep, keep the turntable clean. Also, if you have wet clay, it keeps from getting stuck to the turntable. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. It looks like it's pretty much in the center. Um, whether you rib the outside first or the inside first, it doesn't really matter, but you can also do ribbing on the interior if you have time. Now, when you rib on the inside, make sure that you put your hand on the outside so it's opposite of it. The ribbing just helps to smooth it a little bit more. It makes the cleanup later a little bit easier for you. Okay and that looks a little bit cleaner. I know that my edge is not even at this point. It's still wavy and lumpy. That is something that I am going to be taking care of tomorrow, okay? 
Now, if you get this far on the first day, then we can go ahead and get this leather hard. I am going to write identification on it. My students will need to put either your name or your initials, and please write what bell you have ceramics, okay? So you will write your initials and a bell, and then for storage, uh, most of the time, if you have four people at your tables, uh, my kids, I'm just gonna have you put all four of your pots on a wear board. I'm, this is my only one, so I'll just put that on a small wear board. You would put this in the class damp cabinet. It would stay uncovered, and by tomorrow, it should be leather hard, and then we'll be ready for cleaning. So this is how you make a pinch pot day one pinch it oh and I should say make sure that when you flip this upside down make sure it stays very very round okay sometimes when kids flip it over they like just squish it like this and they and so it's not going to be a round pot make sure that it stays nice and round when you flip it upside down on your wear board okay and uh, we'll get them leather hard and then I'll show you how we clean them I'd like to caution you about a couple of things that you need to be careful to avoid when you're pinching uh, your pinch pots. Um, number one, you need to make sure that you are pinching the base first and then go around and move up the sides. If you don't pinch the base enough, you'll end up with a really thick bottom. Now it may be hard to actually see how thick this is, so I'm going to just cut this in half so I can show you. This pinch pot has walls that are thinner than the bottom. This is way thicker, way thicker than a pinky. If you have a really thick area, it may not dry well. This is the most common mistake that kids make sometimes with um, a really thick bottom, which could lead to it not drying properly and a, a, an explosion in the kiln. Things that aren't dried properly all the way can explode. The other thing to watch out for is making your walls too thin. Now remember how I tried to encourage you all to do pinky thick? Well, this wall gets really, really thin, and if we just cut this, I can show you as well just how thin it is in areas. Oops. Okay. So this is a lot thinner than a pinky. If you're making your walls this thin, you'll end up by sure forming right through it when we go to clean it. So keep that in mind. Pinky thick, avoid the thick bottom, and avoid the thin walls. Also work quickly because the slower you go, the drier it's going to get and the more prone to cracking. <laughs>